Hi, commissioners. I just wanted to come on and say hello and good morning. Good morning, Becky. Good morning, Becky. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? How was the weekend? Cold. <laughs> Cold and snowy. Yeah, so that's everywhere, I think, yeah. isn't it? Here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not to interrupt, but uh, you are now live on YouTube. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Pat and Shauna, did uh, you provide a link on the website? I didn't get to see, get there to see uh, for public I comment. I didn't get to look at it yet either, but Missy uh, was working on that for us. Great. I just Thank entered you. the link right now, so it should be up within the next minute or two. Thank you. Um, we are up and ready, so um, gentlemen, um, you can begin the commission meeting when you're ready. Yeah, I was just going to wait for the hour to roll and start it. <clears throat> there we go. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Patrick Tabor. I'm the acting chair of the Fish and Game Commission for Montana, and I'm calling to get... Uh, uh, to order a special meeting to consider only one item on the agenda. We will forego the reading of any minutes or any other commission business other than the one item on the agenda. Um, 
I do believe, however, that we, uh, Quentin, on these special meetings, do we ordinarily still uh, do our Pledge of Allegiance? Then let's do that. So everybody's ready. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Just want to do a quick roll call uh, for the record. Uh, we'll start by region number uh, Patrick Tabor, region, or excuse me, District 1. Go ahead in uh, numerical order. You're muted, Pat. This You're is muted. Patrick Barth from District 2. Casey Walsh, District 3. Andrew McKean, District 4. Brian Siebel, District 5. Thank you, Commissioners. Before I hand it over to Quentin Kujula, I just want to read a quick public comment. We will be taking uh, public comment on this uh, matter. Um, I'll let you know when there is time for public comment. Uh, when I do so, you'll raise your hand by dialing star 9 to indicate that you'd like to submit uh, public comment. Um, please be cognizant that there may be other people who also want to make a comment. Uh, if you agree with something that has already been said, you can just indicate your agreement instead of repeating the substance. Um, someone will call your name when we are ready to take your comment. Uh, when we do, please state your name, city, and organization you represent, and that way we'll be able to know exactly who we're speaking with. So with that, I'm going to turn the uh, floor over to... Uh, uh, Quentin, and Quentin, you're going to step us through what's the matter that's in front of us today. Chair Tabor, thank you for that, and thank you all for assembling in uh, just a short while after you met uh, last week for the first time. Again, much appreciated for you taking the time. What we have in front of you as the one agenda item is a request to extend the late elk shoulder season in Hunting District 580. Uh, to February 15th, that would be next Monday, seven additional days. Uh, just a little context here. This is, a, this is an extension to the 2020 season uh, as the 2020 season runs into uh, early winter up to February 15th of 2021 in this case. This is uh, in response, the director's office has heard some requests to extend this late shoulder season given mild weather to date, obviously looking out the window, at least here, uh, it's, it's, I don't know if we characterize it as mild, but mild um, up until this storm and the associated reduced harvest uh, due to that uh, open winter weather. Uh, in the spirit of customer service, the director's office decided to take this proposal to the commission, uh, to the full commission. I've already had some questions uh, why that, uh, you know, people comparing it to a game damage hunt or a management season or a shoulder. I'm sorry, a season extension. Season extension, I'm saying um, uh, different from the extension of the 580 because season extension is a specific arm rule. And there are criteria uh, in, those, in those rules and in those tools that as we look to apply this in response to the request across the district for one reason or another, either because we didn't have the information or we didn't think the criteria fit, uh, we, we, we did not bring those tools to bear and instead asked the full commission to convene uh, to consider this proposal. Again, in the spirit of customer service, of the director's office hearing the request. The request is to extend the late elk shoulder season in Hunting District 580. So this is the conversation about the next, to February 15th. So this is the conversation about the next seven days. And the proposal as presented would extend the season that was in place on the day the shoulder season ended, which was um, January 15th. And I apologize, I visited with a couple of you in trying to find out if a date and time work. And I referenced February 1, that was an error on my part. Uh, the, the original definition is for January 15th. Uh, so that season, if, if the motion, if the commission acts on the motion as proposed, that would put in place uh, antlerless elk off of national forest lands for holders of the 59500B license. If a hunter has the 59500B license, they can not only enter the shoulder season, but they can also bring their unused general elk license to bear. So that's how the season read on January 15th when it ended. Again, animal elk only, 
off of National Forest Lands 59500. And if you have the 59500, you can also use your unused general health license to take an at yourself under those terms. Uh, for point of clarification, there are the 59500 went came out of the drawing with surplus licenses available, and there are still just a little over 400 uh, 59500 licenses available via surplus. Right, Chair, a little bit, con a little bit additional context, and then I'll step aside for questions. Chair Tabor, the this is a case to get everybody. We're we're using 2020 here, and now it's 2021. The 2020 season runs through, uh, runs into 2021. So just keep those dates clear. Uh, the proposal here and the agenda item speaks to the 2020 season in 580. So again, this is a conversation about the next seven days. That anchors back to, uh, I, it might be helpful for all to uh, recall or understand for the first time, depending on their exposure to those conversations that the 2020 and 2021 hunting seasons, including shoulder seasons, have been previously put in place. Uh, so the, the, the 2020 season was, was finally adopted by the commission in February, 2020. The 2021 shoulder seasons, that was, that was a concluding action for biennial season setting. I think we've, uh, in, in some of the information that's come to you has been the topic of biennial season setting. The commission at that time uh, opted to set aside the 2021 shoulder season, so next season's shoulder seasons, um, until this, coming, this year that we are in right now. And the commission did that. The introduction of the topic was in October, 2020. And then in December of 2020, the commission approved the 2021 shoulder seasons. So those are also in place now. And the 2021 shoulder season adoption by the commission was equal to the 2020 shoulder season adoption by the commission. Uh, why that staggered uh, adoption took place with shoulder seasons have been a much debated topic and they've been tied to performance metrics and the commission wanted to wait a year to see if any other information in the context of performance metrics might come in come to hand to uh, further guide the decision on which what the 2021 shoulder seasons would look like at the end of the day that information was scant i think we've had conversations previously a lot of the information, I think one of the commissioners has, has spoken to this reality. A lot of the information that comes to the department um, to be used by the commission in making these sort of decisions will come later yet in the winter uh, on the heels of our telephone harvest surveys and on the heels of the uh, area management biologist surveillance flights. So there wasn't a whole lot of additional data to go on, uh, but the commission still wanted to um, you know, strike true to the intent of those shoulder seasons. So that's just a little clarification. Again, these have these these shoulder seasons have previous definitions. Um, you know, parties recognizing that that definition ended on January fifteenth, recognizing that weather's been mild, recognizing that for that harvest has been light, recognizing that the intent is to have harvest. These are districts over objective in five eighty considerably so. Again, the director's office heard for those heard those circumstances in request to extend the twenty twenty season to February fifteenth in five eighty. And the director's office, again, hearing that in the spirit of customer service, looked for, through the tools that were available, found none of, none of them fitting uh, as tightly as they might, and so took the approach of convening the uh, full five members of the commission to put the question in front of you all. And uh, again, thank you for rapidly assembling your response. Chair Tabor, I'll stop there. Maybe that was a little too much. Maybe it was not quite enough, but we'll certainly stand for questions, Chair Tabor. Thank you, Mr. Kujula. Uh, commissioners, questions for Mr. Kujula. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have okay. a few, please. Oh, go ahead, Andrew. Uh, yep. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, so uh, I'll start with uh, Commissioner McKean. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thanks, members of the commission, and thank you, Quentin. Um, I guess in the spirit of that direction from the commission to tie decisions regarding shoulder seasons back to performance metrics. Do we, can you give us any specific, hunting district specific metrics or information that might guide our decision regarding 580? The elk population, any particular habitat or human population dynamics that have influenced harvest or non-harvest? 
Chair Tabor, Commissioner McKean. Yeah, I can, I'll take a stab at that. Thank you for the question. And I'll start uh, talking about shoulder seasons in a broader fashion, if I may. Um, give a little description about shoulder seasons. And shoulder seasons are just, because they do feed into the performance metric question. Shoulder seasons are, by definition, a, a rifle, a firearm opportunity to harvest antlers elk outside of the general statewide season date. So that is to say outside of the six week archery season and outside of the five week rifle season uh, that concludes the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Um, they have outside dates. This, these, are in, these are captured in guidelines uh, that the previous commission has put in place. They have outside dates of August 15th to February 15th. So both an early and a late component. In some areas, they run that full gamut. In some areas, they're just the early. In some areas, they're just the late. Um, and then uh, in some areas, as the case of 580, they don't run all the way to February 15th, but in the case of this year, stopped on January 15th. There are performance metrics. Uh, they're tied to a, to a three-year running average. The, the, so let me back up. The, 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 they do have performance metrics, and those performance metrics are rooted heavily in harvest. Harvest realized versus harvest uh, that has been measured and predicted by the department to be necessary to at least cap the population. Shoulder seasons are directed to those hunting districts that are not at objective, more specifically are above objective. And you'll hear objective a lot. They are, the, the objectives are currently captured in the elk management plan from 2005. You've all heard reference that the new elk plan is in the works, but we're very early in that process. And most certainly the current elk plan is still the 25 plan, the 2005 plan, I'm sorry, the 2005 plan is still in play. So again, directed to those districts that are over objective. And in that context, the performance metrics look to using harvest information from telephone surveys, and then using surveillance information from the biologist winter surveillance work and using what we know about recruitment based off of observed calf numbers during those surveys. Department staff make an effort to predict what the recruitment will be for the coming year and then from that what the uh, harvest, what the prescribed harvest should be, what the prescribed harvest would be if the intent were to cap the population, to take the calf crop, uh, if, 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 if you will, for one of a better, shorter way to put it. And so that's, that's something I uh, just sent out. Uh, I sent out earlier this morning. I'm looking at the 20, uh, 2016 Montana shoulder season performance criteria. Uh, and that, that, again, we'll, let me back up. They run for three-year running averages, which is a little bit of a, which gets a little bit sideways with the biennial season setting process every two years. That lends itself to thinking about four. And then remember also we have the lag time before we have all of the information. So suffice it perhaps to say in this conversation, there's a little bit of disconnect that we have to manage in the shoulder season between the three-year running average, between the biennial season setting process and when the data is available. So that's what shoulder seasons are. That's how it includes performance metrics in the case of 580 and some other districts that, well, let me say broadly, there's a varied performance. When we look across the shoulder season districts some districts are meeting those metrics. That is to say, they're meeting that prescribed harvest. Other districts are not. 580 is one of those districts that, for one of a better way to put it, for one circumstance or another, is struggling to meet those performance metrics, those harvest, prescribed harvests. Uh, with an eye to harvest, we understand that to be part of the question. Uh, again, recognizing that the mild, recognizing the mild winter weather up till this point in time, up till this storm, People recognizing that harvest is something that's looked for. That's the fundamental reason to have a shoulder season. Not realizing it for the weather, uh, you know, folks said, can we have another, can we have another bit of time under winter weather? Does that, does that help Commissioner McKeon? Chair Tabor, uh, Mr. Kujula, it does. Could you talk at all? I, this is really for the benefit of anyone listening as well. We have the, um, shoulder seasons master list and justification with population numbers and some of the department's discussion about why or why not a hunting district may not be achieving those performance metrics. Could you walk us through that? Let me catch up with you. Let me catch up with you, Commissioner McKean. And again, you were looking at the master list. Is that what you said? Yeah, um, that was 
uh, modified by the commission in December and basically, yep. oh, I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. Let me, I'm just catching up. I just wanted to make sure that I was looking at the same thing you are. If I can get it to pull up. When the uh, document is titled proposed antlers elk shoulder seasons master list and justifications and it's dated February 13th, 2020. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you, Chair Tabor. I have that. So for those want, if you want to scroll and I understand Commissioner McKean, you are looking at 580. That takes us to page 14. Is everybody on that page? And again, you see that you see the, the modification to, and this is a case where the document we are looking at, and you'll see the two columns, the two columns that are highlighted. The first one is the, uh, the is the proposed season. And these are the these are the highlighted columns. You'll see highlighting in some of the in some instances. The the left hand half of so the one, two, three, four, the fifth and sixth columns were the proposed seasons going into season setting last February, tw February 2020, just to give everybody an anchor. Because I want to explain why on page 14, you see that the proposed dates were to 2-1, February 1, at the commission meeting itself, that, uh, that was scaled back to January 15th. The discussion on dates, uh, is an interesting one. Uh, on, on its face, it's easy to race to August 15th to February 15th, in some cases more than others, because of the amount of elk that need to be harvested. Uh, easy, being easier said than done, uh, elk are not deer. Um, harvest rate is something less than deer. But there are places where, excuse me, there are places where you run into the, I shouldn't say that, there are places where you will hear concern expressed at the local level for just the length of the season. Uh, in some cases, uh, to, to use but one example of that, for example, if you're a landowner that has upland birds, that entertains you know, your, your, your access management um, engages, whatever that access management program be, it engages upland birds, perhaps also uh, antelope, perhaps also archery, perhaps also the rifle season, uh, and then going into the shoulder season. Uh, there are those landowners out there that have all of that, and you do hear uh, coupled with, you know, landowner operations, calving, et cetera, et cetera, you will hear a fatigue show up in the conversation. I'm not saying that's everywhere, and I'm not putting that just on landowners. I'm just using that as an example. And in this case, those sorts of conversations brought the proposal back from February 1 to January 15th. The actual instrument of harvest is the that's available right now uh, ended up being the 595. That's uh, B license valid in multiple districts throughout region five. And then in the case of 580, if you had that, if you have that 595, you can also use the general elk license um, during the dates of the late shoulder season. The other thing I would point to, and I think I'm sorry, I'm taking a long time, Commissioner McKeon, to get to what I think is the root of your question. You see that last column, uh, and these were assembled by the regions, you see high landowner support to continue shoulder season. So that was a case where the district was not, was struggling to meet performance criteria. And so that was a real question for the commission in light of the guidelines. Do you continue doing that shoulder season or do you search for something else? In response to that question, the land and community said, let's continue these. We haven't got the task done. We're not meeting those uh, criteria, but certainly still pursuing them. Chair Tabor, Commissioner McKeon, does that address your question? Thank you. I think next we have uh, Commissioner Walsh. You have your hand up. Yeah, just a, a couple questions. I, one is um, why today? I mean, why did why weren't we discussing this last Thursday? Commissioner Walsh, that's perhaps that's certainly in the top five questions of the day, Commissioner Walsh. It's a very good one. <laughs> Chair, Chair Tabor, Commissioner Walsh. And the answer was, you know, it, it, we didn't get to it. We didn't, we didn't, as we assembled the agenda, this one fell off the desk. 
And when we, when we realized we had missed it, we were past the, uh, past the notice for the public. And so we were scrambling. Um, when we frankly, we were still assembling stuff, uh, even as you met um, Commissioner Walsh. So I'm not gonna say that's a good reason, but that is the reason. If we could have put it on and met public notice, uh, we, we, we would have, but we didn't. And uh, the season used to, the shoulder season used to extend to 215 and why was it shortened? Yeah, I, I believe so. So yes, I, that is correct. I don't have the previous regulations uh, with me, but I do believe that is correct. Um, and, and I think it's gone short, long and now shorter again. And that conversation, just to capture it at a real course scale, I'm sorry, Chair Tabor and Commissioner Walsh. So the conversation about searching, the conversation the commission had with the attendant public through its process about searching for, about recognizing here is a district, and I'm saying that broadly, not just 580, here is a district that's not meeting its, its performance criteria. It's not meeting the harvest that the population tells us needs to be taken in order to cap and reverse population growth. And so recognizing that, not wanting, the commission clearly not wanting to take the step of pulling the shoulder season back entirely was essentially asked and answered the question, well, does a different display of season dates and license type represent an answer? For example, a piece there is, you know, there are places where a long season, there is anecdotal information out there where a long season can in some places kind of work against you where you see a, a hunter tired effect. And so the question was, well, perhaps if we put license harvest opportunity in a shorter window, maybe hunters also being humans, they'll respond uh, in, a, in a more vigorous fashion throughout that window. Uh, the other thing that I think is reflected in this current definition of the shoulder season in 580 that came out of that conversation is, well, perhaps here is a place where more hunters isn't the answer. Maybe we're tapping out on access points relative to elk distribution. So that's why you see the general license being valid, but only if you first have the 595, the 595 being a bit of a gatekeeper license in and of itself valid for an antlerless elk. But also if you have that, you can take two elk, only one person, not two people. So again, in this case, I think what we saw the commission conclusion say, well, let's try something shorter. Let's see if it can be more concentrated to more effective to realizing more harvest. And within that, let's also, instead of trying to put more people in that window, let's give more harvest opportunity for each of the people that do find their way through that window via the 595B license. Chair Tabor, Commissioner Walsh, does that answer your question? It does. I, and I, I guess I have one, uh, Chairman Tabor, one follow-up or a couple. One is um, if the numbers, it's three to four times the targeted population and maybe it's access related or maybe it's weather related, uh, but uh, why not consider or when will we consider the 22 uh, cutoff? And, and we're not giving folks a lot of time to plan their hunt right now. Um, and then the, my, I guess my follow, follow up question, Mr. Kujula is, I'm really looking forward to hearing the public comment on this, but what is the main opposition to this? Chair Tabor, Commissioner Walsh, uh, I, I hear, well, pulling a question out of your first statement there. So the 2022 okay. and 2023 hunting seasons, that conversation will begin uh, this coming fall. And by begin, I mean the commission will see proposals and vet those proposals with the attending public uh, late fall, early winter. And again, that would be for the 22, 23 seasons if the commission decides to stay in that biennial cycle uh, that currently is in place. The public opposition is, you know, you run into, let me back up the, it, it, so weather, access, elk themselves, their numbers, their distribution, I think to be comprehensive about it, and it is good to be comprehensive in this discussion, all of those variables are here to be measured more broadly in, under the topic of elk management. You know, they, 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 it's, it's not as easy to get an elk as it is to get a deer. Not as many people want two or three elk as people want two or three deer or antelope for the size. They're a logistic to get out. There are different management objectives uh, across land ownerships for elk. 
uh, with respect to both, you know, the number that different people, different ownerships see as the right number, and also their access um, uh, mechanism that they put in play. Um, all of those um, vary across the landscape. And they can, again, if, if starting with that first one, if everybody doesn't fundamentally agree that the targeted objective is the objective that works for them, then you start to see disconnect, if I may, uh, Commissioner Walsh, from that point forward as people debate what is the right answer. And the right answer in the conversation ranges from you know, the, the six week archery, the right answer for individual perspectives, I should say, ranges from the six week archery and the five week general. It should all be done there, add more license. We've got plenty there to an advocacy um, for as many licenses as possible starting August 15th and run, running to February 15th. And even as you put, uh, and you see, we see an example here where the commission found something, the previous sitting commission found something in between those two points. Even as you see, uh, decision makers looking for that sweet spot, if you will, you still fundamentally have those different ways of looking at what the objective should be and, you know, what the mechanism to arrive at that objective should be. Hopefully that, you know, that we're, we're going to see, I'm, I'm getting a little bit further out now, but, you know, hopefully, I, I think we will see the next elk plan grapple with that reality that if you go down to the fundamental layer, what's really at play here is different land ownerships, reasonably, appropriately, legally, um, all have, you know, from case to case, from place to place, um, very different or slightly different objectives. And from there stems, uh, you know, the circumstances that we see play out on the landscape. Does that, Chair Tabor, uh, Commissioner Walsh, I know I was speaking in the figurative and broadly at the concept level more than a few times there, but I wonder if that um, at least help answer some of your questions. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Commissioner Walsh. I have next Commissioner Byworth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Clinton, for your presentation. Uh, this elk uh, management issue has been very complex uh, and a steep learning curve for me uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, but I, I've become a kind of accustomed to a process that's been set up uh, reviewing these these uh, proposals with uh, information at hand uh, often were consulted directly, like in this case, Hunting District 580 falls both in my district and Commissioner Walsh's district. Typically we were consulted by the field or the region uh, and provided with a season justification form, which stepwise goes through criteria and the like, and then gives us an idea of of some of the details of the hunt and the proposals. So it, I'm at, kind of at a loss to, to make a rational judgment here, but I appreciate the information that was provided. Uh, I guess with that kind of introduction, uh, when we follow the process, we follow the statutes, of course. And so uh, Mr. Kujula, you mentioned both game damage and supplemental game damage hunts. I wondered why we didn't follow that process or whether or not th these are particular landowners or a group of landowners that we can put into a management season or uh, the characteristics of this proposal and why across this really large uh, hunting district would we come up with this late proposal? Chair Tabor, Commissioner Byer, thank you for those questions. And uh, you know, remind me of something I before I start. Uh, the first thing I would reply is reminded me of something that I meant to offer in reply to Commissioner Walsh's comment and that is that uh, we do think that the, this winter weather um, you know, furthered this request as people look forward and recognizing that change was common in the context of weather. Uh, maybe that means more elk availability. Uh, can we get something done before February 15th? So I wanted to add again, the weather prescription or the weather forecast, I do, we do think added to this. Uh, Commissioner Byerth, more directly to your question, um, but, but, but connected to that, the task then became, okay, how do we, hearing the request, we, we turned the request as something to apply to 580. And, you know, knowing just as I've spoke before that there's a wide range of circumstances across and knowing that this is directed to private land, elk on private land, and knowing that there's in 580 and as in any other district, a range of circumstances across there to be measured. Looking at the calendar, uh, we were concerned about, you know, being able to find something that would apply, 
you know, finding the time to assess those circumstances across the district relative to the short timeline. For those other tools that uh, Commissioner Byerth, you mentioned and I mentioned previously, that's a requirement because things, things like season extensions, and I'm, and, and I'm using season extension very literally here, that's a formal term, that's an arm rule, those have, that has a criteria and it looks to assess, it asks the question, did the, you know, did the general season harvest, um, was access available in a manner that, you know, access for want of a better way to put it, wasn't the constraint to harvesting elk. And those are deliberations that have to take place, you know, in their time with local staff. Uh, and we, we simply didn't see the timeline to do that. And, and and so, and that being said, we recognize that without doing that, we can't sincerely apply those tools for the kinds of criteria that are there. So the decision was made, and I'm representing that decision here today to keep this at a coarser scale. It's a director's office uh, decision to, hey, let's put this in front of the commission. We can't use one of those other tools that would have went to one commissioner or the other commissioner, maybe two if the district went into two commissioner districts. And in essence, we're bringing you today a, uh, a, a mini season setting uh, for the next 70 days for the next seven days in hunting district 580. Uh, so we didn't we didn't ask staff to take the time to try to assemble all those metrics for us all those circumstances try to sum them up into how something else might work rather we made the decision and maybe the commission here will say it was the wrong decision made but we made the decision to focus on what we think are the salient points fitting these this conversation about seven days, you know, request to ex, to extend for another week in a district that over objective, that's experienced mild winter weather to date, and that has been part of reduced harvest. And so, frankly, we backed up a little bit and didn't look at it any further than that, other than to check in with the region and make sure that this proposal in no way represented a significant, um, you know, negative impact to the resource itself. Commissioner Byworth, Chair Thank Tate. you. Uh, follow up, Mr. Chair. Did we lose our chairman? Yeah, he, he lost his connection, I just found out, uh, for the moment. And so um, just, uh, I, I think just, just, just continue. Uh, and it looks like after you, Pat, when you're done, look, it looks like Brian would be next, so. Uh, thanks, Mr. Valeski. Uh, Quinn? Is there, uh, knowing that the weather has changed fairly drastically, uh, have we uh, seen game damage and, and things manifest over the weekend since we just heard about it? Have we seen uh, elk movement and game damage really ramp up over the weekend? Have you heard from your field people or wardens or biologists of cases uh, yeah. of that? It's a great question, Commissioner Byerth. You know, I haven't seen it. I am. I, so... So backing up a little bit, our game, we manage our game damage requests and our responses through a, a, a system on the state network. And so I can see those requests come in and those prescriptions go out. And so far this morning, I haven't looked um, throughout everything, but I haven't seen that show up um, yet. But it's a good question. And certainly we might well expect here and there um, as animals respond to the probably more the cold than the light snow. But um, yeah. Point, point question. It is certainly something we would expect, <clears throat> Commissioner Byerth, to see a little uptick in game damage. Okay. Can, can I ask another follow-up, please? Or do we have our chairman back yet? Yes, I'll, I'll proceed. Uh, so a little context in the shoulder season. Uh, you know, this has been probably one of the most controversial and uh, one of the biggest workloads almost uh, for commissioners has been dealing with the elk shoulder seasons. And uh, I think at 580, I, I think if you look at the data provided in the, um, was it, the title was uh, 6A 2016 to 2019 shoulder season harvest criteria tables. You'll see that the over the years, we've done a very good job of, of meeting criteria during the archery and general season, uh, but the shoulder season wasn't operating at, uh, to, to perform its role. And part of that is, uh, I think uh, Mr. Kujula explained it pretty well. If you have a really long extended season, sometimes you, you risk disinterest on the part of landowners or sportsmen and women uh, to, to going out over this long, prolonged period and trying to push it back into a tighter uh, role met a couple reasons uh, or a couple objectives. One was trying to get more people on the ground early. 
And of course that may have been defeated by the weather in this case. And the other one is to make sure that we follow the rules that the commission passed uh, in dealing with these seasons. So you look at the liberal number of uh, special permits, lots of different tags. It's divided up into very specific segments uh, below Sweetgrass Creek, between Sweetgrass and Big Timber Creek, north of Big Timber Creek. Uh, there's, there's, uh, it's a very large and diverse area. So what I believe, if I, I re recalling our conversations in, with the last commission, the idea was to try and, and boost that, uh, that season up and over and get it up to where it's meeting objectives, which gives us the, the commission a lot more flexibility. Well, that in mind, I think, uh, I just wonder if we can actually uh, get the job done with seven days if we act today. Who are the hunters that can go out and where are they going to go? Uh, usually with the game damage, you actually have a roster and those people could get notified almost in a moment's notice to uh, get out and contact the landowner and hunt. Since we don't have that tool at our disposal, how, I guess, who are the hunters that will go and where will they go and how will we get that word to them? Commissioner Byer, great question. And so, you know, depending on what the commission moves on today, um, if in fact they do, you all do move to extend the 580 late shoulder season until February 15th, we'd certainly move to release that information to the public as quickly as we can. Uh, and th that would include those, you know, we'd, we'd look to connect with those persons that have those licenses in hand, whether they be the 595 and or an unused general elk license. And then again, uh, I think I mentioned earlier that there are still some number of those 595 licenses available um, available for purchase should people want to do that. So we'll have outreach. We don't know all of the answer as to where they will find um, access. We presume that you know, for those folks, you know, hearing the request that, you know, folks are also thinking about, those folks are also thinking about providing access by one definition or another. And then to your point of game damage, both in your previous comment and the one you made here, Commissioner Byer, to be very clear, there's nothing in this decision that precludes a site-specific application of a game damage hunt. Uh, you know, if there's, if there's a game damage situation, and let's just paint a real specific example. If there's a game damage situation uh, on private land in 580, and if, if the commission were to move on this, and that season extension in 580 was not addressing that game damage, there would be nothing to preclude you know, local staff from framing up a game damage hunt as an example on that specific property fitting that specific situation, coming not to the full commission, but to the area commissioner for that approval. But those things can be overlapped if circumstances on the ground point to one of them not working. Commissioner Byer. We have, I think we have our commissioner, uh, our chair back now. It looks like maybe by telephone, is that right? Does he? Um, Chair, Chair Tabor, you're muted. I don't know if you're speaking, but uh, it looks like have, on my screen you're muted. Does he have to press star nine, Shauna? Um, he, I have him unmuted to talk. Oh, there, there he is. Here we go. It was it was actually star six that unmutes me. I apologize, everyone. I I have no idea why my Wi-Fi went down because I usually have excellent service, but um, I'm connected now via my cell phone. I apologize for that. Chair Tabor, there were some great questions. I don't know how well, how, I don't know how good the answers were. <laughs> I, I suspect they were thorough and very complete. Um, I don't have the benefit of seeing the screen, so I don't know who else is in the queue for asking questions from the commissioners. It looks like... Um, Commissioner Siebel was next, Mr. Chair. Excellent. So, uh, Commissioner Byorth, did you get all your questions answered? Uh, certainly for now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Well, then we'll go move to Commissioner uh, Siebel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Kujula. Uh, a follow up question to Commissioner Byorth's question. Uh, in, I, I also question whether seven days is, is, is enough time to be effective. I don't see a lot of downside necessarily in, in, in trying, but I would encourage you to not, not only identify the public, but also try to find out which landowners requested this hunt and, and, and hook them up with the public. I think that would be a very good public service thing to do for the hunters to, to put both of those together and make sure that people know where, where they'll probably be welcome to hunt. 
Um, that was just more of a comment. I did have a question uh, for Mr. Kuzla, a follow-up question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, Commissioner Siebel. Uh Mr. Kujula, the, the information you sent us with regards uh, to the Elks shoulder season performance data, looking at 2018, 2019, as, as Commissioner Byers pointed out, uh, it seemed like at 580, I mean, we've, according to these objectives, have done fairly well, even in the last two seasons, overall harvest, uh, and, and maybe some question about the shoulder. But my question, I guess, in a bigger picture, the, the mention in the in the agenda cover sheet for today was that there was uh, 40, almost 450% over objective on the elk counted last winter for this area. But I see on these on these performance that, that we were fairly close. And, and I guess my question is, is this harvest or are the is the is the objective harvest, is this from the 2005 plan, these these original numbers that are in the in the uh, uh, the season performance data that you sent? Is that from the 2005 plan? Because those numbers look excessively low given the the over the overpopulation over objective that we see in the, in the numbers. Commissioner, Chair Tabor, Commissioner Siebel, yes, they are. And, and so the, the population objective numbers that you see in that status table that, sent, that was sent out at the cover sheet references, those population objectives are the ones captured in the five plan. And in asking that question, Commissioner Siebel, I think you've hit upon one, there are others, but certainly that is one of the biggest details that, you know, different perspectives, people, you know, championing different perspectives will point to when they say this plan needs to be updated. In some cases, just, just to be, just to paint the range. In some cases, you know, the comment might be, so we're way over objective. We need, we need to figure out how to get back to that objective. In other cases, another stakeholder looking at it through a different lens will say that objective, that objective that we set, that was set in 04 and 05 isn't fitting. We've got to revisit the objective, not how we're performing relative to that objective. Commissioner Siebel, did that answer your question, sir? It did, and, and Mr. Chairman and Mr. Kujula, uh, yes, it, it, it did, and, and it tells me that we definitely need, I mean, I'm glad that we're readdressing the elk management plan and, and the, those target objectives. It's clear that they need to be updated. And one more follow-up, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Siebel. I, I just, Mr. Kujula, just in general for the shoulder season, I, I noticed this year in, in my area, Last year it was the 00500 tag for the shoulder season that was extended. This year was 59500, but the 005 tag is still available. I had people that came to hunt uh, that were very confused and had the wrong tag in the late season, and I guess I would I would question why that happened, and, and I just want to make sure that we make that really clear going forward. I don't know why there was two different tags, but it did get confusing. There was a lot of switching going on uh, between the seasons on those, and I was just curious why that happened, uh, why we ended up with the 05 and the 595 tag. And I just would recommend that we, we make it clean and, and easy and, and simple going forward. Chair Tabor, Commissioner Siebel, yeah, what well said, you know, simplifying the regulations always a good thing to, to consider. You know, I can I can very coarsely say that the con, you know, as I watched that, as I participated in that conversation with the commission, you know, there was an I saw the I saw the conversation recognizing that there were licenses that really were tailored to an individual district or a couple of districts. And so recognizing that there's a focus there, those that have that district, you know, presumably have a commitment by one definition or other to go into that district to realize that harvest. But then there was also a conversation, you know, about, uh, you know, having a, a regional pool of B licenses um, and a big number of those that offered more flexibility for hunters so that they might be more flexible across the landscape and making their decisions about just where to go, you know, maybe in response to weather, maybe in response to elk distribution um, that's coinciding with opportunities for access, those sorts of things. I, I'm, I don't think anybody is here to say, to, to, to argue against uh, regulation complexity. And I don't know if anybody's here to say that the definition that the commission came to is the right one relative to performance or com, uh, simplicity, but I'm only here to say those are the pushes and pulls that those conversations experience, Commissioner Siegel. Did that answer, sir? Yes, thank you, Mr. Kuchel. Any uh, further questions, uh, Commissioner Siebel or any other commissioners? Mr. Chairman, this is Pat, uh, Commissioner Pat Byer. May I ask another question or follow-up? Commissioner Byer, please. Uh, Quentin, I might shed a little light on the, the variety of tags. I think 
uh, it is complicated in region five and especially uh, in 580 there, are, again, there's region wide tags, there's archery tags, multi-region archery tags, there's uh, hunting district specific tags, and then there's shoulder season tags. And all of these, uh, this, these complexities involve not just commission action, but also a legislative action. For example, uh, a very prominent landowner in um, hunting district 580, uh, during the last legislative session, uh, allowed the department uh, and the commission to issue a third hunting license, trying to get at these high uh, high elk populations. So the complexity, I think, uh, as frustrating as it can be, and almost uh, you know, if you don't uh, really understand the the whole process and all the different players going into these season setting, you might think it's kind of ridiculous. But really, they're all an effort to get to that customer service motive, trying to provide as much opportunity, as many tags as possible to get people out on the ground to get elk uh, managed through our best tool, which is, you know, through uh, public or, uh, you know, public hunting. It's the most effective tool across the state. Uh, in this particular area, I'm not, I'm only familiar with the northeastern, uh, or I'm sorry, the northwestern corner where there's uh, some BLM, uh, or I'm sorry, block management areas that uh, there was a lot of elk killed Unfortunately, some of them were very in a very short time. So I'm not here to say it's working. I'm not here to say it's, it's perfect, uh, but uh, the efforts that have been put forth and the complexity that goes into these, these tags is all about trying to meet that objective and get as many people out on the ground and as many elk in the freezers as we can. I think the, uh, the struggle uh, we have in, in, in the question before us is I, I'm not sure any one of us is against having a season uh, or extending the season to get some more elk harvested and get some more people out on the ground. Uh, my concern is more with the process that we have these processes in place that are very complex, as you can see expressed in the kind of tags out there. Uh, but we have to be mindful of that, especially with a new commission in place and a new uh, administration that we, uh, we, we, we follow the process and we make sure that, that our decisions are based on really good uh, science and policy. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that this isn't a good idea. I'm just worried that uh, we, we don't wanna circumvent the process in a way that makes our decisions harder down the line. Chair Tabor? Uh, Mr. Kujula. I, I wonder, I didn't hear a question there, but I, there is perhaps something I could add to that, Chair Tabor, either now or after. I see Commissioner McKean's got his hand up as well. So I, I'll certainly defer just, um, um, Mr. Kujula, go ahead and make your statement and then we'll move to Commissioner uh, Keene. Th thank you, Chair. Uh, Commissioner Byerth, uh, well said and understood all of this conversation, good stuff, uh, hidden sharply on the topic of elk management and all that it is. Uh, you know, one of the, with an eye to process, you heard me talk earlier about on the heels of Commissioner Walsh's good question, why not last Thursday and just didn't have stuff assembled and, and uh, you know, needed to accommodate due notice, you know, and, and also recognizing that in that, you know, we still hadn't settled on just exactly what pathway to take uh, and, and recognizing that it didn't fit this tool and that tool uh, come to the commission. But also there's another element uh, in that decision and that is you'll notice that there is a sharp focus here uh, in the proposal. It's to the remaining seven days understanding as Commissioner Byerth and others have said here that elk, you know, elk start being high valued, they start being contentious, and then the discussion about elk management only adds to that. And so uh, the department, you, you know, is expressing a, a, an a, a awareness here that, yeah, there's, there's, there's other venues, uh, you know, with, with more engagement that's available um, in a circumstance that's not such a short notice as this one has been. And so our response, whether it be sufficient or not to answer the concerns, uh, we, we, we do think we are fine with public notice, but our response is to keep it narrowed. Again, 20, the remainder of the 2020 season in this one hunting district, extending the season as it ended on January 15th. We, that, that's one of the reasons you see that narrowed focus there to just those elements for the next seven days. Again, whether we'll let you all judge if that's you know, a reason fit to the circumstance or not, but that was the rationale. Commissioner Byer, Chair Tabor.
And again, Chair, I do see Commissioner McKeon with a hand still up, sir. Chair, Chair Tabor, uh, this is Mike Valeski. I was, I, I, I want to build on, if, if I can, if, if Commissioner McKean, if I can just have a second here. I'm, I'm kind of wearing uh, Hank Warsex, Director Warsex hat uh, on this call for him because he couldn't make it. And I, so um, Quentin started down the road a little bit uh, about the answer to this. And I kind of want to just jump up to 30,000 feet in a real and 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 put this into some context because this is this is very this is unusual. We don't have this sort of phone call very often, um, where where out of our out of our normal process we have a we have a one off like this that's special. But when the conditions exist, and I don't have to go into why we think. I mean, we we had a request. We have some willing landowners. We've got. We've got um, elk way over objective, and it is only for a week, but at least it's something. And we, so the 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 whole reason you see us before you is because we want to be responsive. And we found then when when we at least don't take a stab at responsiveness, then um, it puts it into the realm of of um, you know certainly with the the legislature going on right now, it puts it into the realm of. Well, if the if the commission can't be responsive, then they're going to just go with um, process. Which, of course, that's the. I mean, we're talking the difference. Be, or we're talking that constant tension between consistency and flexibility. And when the commission isn't willing, uh, I, 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 I just very speak very plainly here. When the commission isn't willing to exercise that discretion and and provide some flexibility, it adds to the argument that we see in the Capitol where legislators say, well, if, 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 if we can't have, uh, if it's gonna be so rote, well, then let's just make the law and, and force the issue. And, and of course, any governor, any commission member, I think wants to preserve executive authority. So there is that flexibility. And sometimes I think you really do have to exercise it to show that no, um, there's a reason for the commission it needs to be more responsive than every two years and, and with something as, as um, inflexible as, <coughs> as legislation. Um, and we need to sometimes show that yes, we are willing to when, the, when certain conditions exist, um, we, we're going we're gonna to jump out of what is normal process and, and, and get the job despite get the job done um, and be responsive to landowners despite the, the the um, the the veer, veering from process or veering from normal circumstance um, a little bit, and just showing that yeah we do want to be responsive and that's what the commission that's the that describes the whole uh, purpose for the commission why you have a commission that that, that weighs in on those um, not just resource concerns but but the social concerns that come up that that aren't that don't require this the, you know where it's a, real, um, it's a real frustration to folks out there where we require this process answer to something that, well, if we could just take care of it and let's do that. And, and the commission has that within its ability and the order and the way to keep that ability is to make sure that you, you uh, are willing to exercise that, um, that, that decision-making and that flex, flexibility sometimes when it's called for. So that's why you see us in front of you with this. That's why, uh, we want to, any executive wants to preserve that sort of authority so that you can make laws work and make government work and, and implement the law without having hands tied uh, by, by something that only comes around every couple of years. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Valeski. I believe we need to go to Commissioner McKean and then Commissioner Walsh is next up. Thank you, Chair Tabor, uh, and thank you for that, uh, Mr. Valeski. That was actually getting at the thrust of my question, which is, I agree with everything you said in terms of preserving executive um, authority. This appears to be, and, the, and this I think could also be said for much of the shoulder seats discussion, this appears to be a request for the commission to sort of micromanage that executive action. And I'm a little bit worried about the precedent that it sets that anytime that conditions may change within a previously approved structure, that 
an, ex an exemption to that comes before the commission. And I, I just wonder aloud if there's a way that we can avoid that sort of micromanagement where the, 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 the overarching policy can set the direction and then, give, and, and then give the department that ability to exercise that executive action. Um, Commissioner uh, McKean, was that a question that you wanted either Mr. Valeski or, or um, yeah. Mr. Kujula to respond to, or are you just making a statement? Thank you, Chair Tabor. The question is, can we expect to see this, uh, another request come through on Wednesday and another on Thursday, and then perhaps another on Monday? Yeah, so I didn't, uh, this is, um, Mike Boleski, I didn't explain that quite as clearly as I should have. I, so this is a bit of a one-off, um, and I don't think you can expect to see those um, for practical reasons. We're at the end of the season, um, obviously. Um, but we try not to, um, certainly try not to bring these forward like this in a, in a somewhat, you might call, emergency although I, that's a, a bit of a misnomer in this situation. Um, but um, in that sort of fashion, uh, just because we want to respect process and respect, uh, um, you know, what so that so that the public has a general expectation of what to expect, um, and so these are rare. But when they do come along, um, you know, we think they are important because it does show that it does show that that the commission is willing to exercise its discretion in cases where sometimes it just doesn't. Uh, you've got a, a one-off, as I called it earlier, where it just doesn't fit. And, and, we, and you know how frustrating that is for, to be a landowner hearing, well, it's outside of our process sort of answer. That doesn't feed the bulldog. And, and um, we want to be as responsive as we possibly can. So, but Commissioner McKee, no, they, these are not common, um, but they will come up time to time, yes. Okay, I think um, we're moving to Commissioner Byorth. I hope I got that in the right order. Go ahead, Commissioner Byorth. <coughs> I believe you're muted. You're muted, Brian. Okay. I'm sorry. That. Okay, I, uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. I, I make want to make sure that uh, Commissioner Walsh gets heard. I just wanted to uh, provide a comment and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, Quentin, but uh, in terms of the flexibility, especially during a, a, a campaign year and a big transition and a legislative year, we hear about how inflexible we are, but I wanted to give you guys all, uh, you know, update you. I, I briefly mentioned it in my opening comments last week, but we have uh, special game damage seasons going on in, you know, uh, the Boulder Valley down to Madison, there's several. We just approved another one. In 560, just south of the 580, uh, over there on the Highland Ranch, uh, we just approved another one. So the idea that we're unresponsive or inflexible, uh, I hear that a lot, especially during the political season. But uh, frankly, I spent a lot of time working with the field and the regions, uh, being as flexible as we can be within the letter of the law. So uh, not that Mike or Mr. Valeski was suggesting otherwise, but I just wanna make sure uh, as you guys enter this uh, complicated uh, uh, job as a commissioner, you understand that there's a lot of elements of flexibility that we, we act on weekly uh, starting in August, uh, right up into February. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Byorth. Uh, Commissioner Walsh, you've had your hand patiently up in the left-hand corner of your screen for quite some time. I apologize for that. Yeah, no worries. Um, I am uh, really just uh, in an effort to move on to public comment. Um, I was told the meeting was going to last an hour, and, and uh, we're just at the hour mark now, and I'm, I'm going to have to leave this call in 15 minutes. Um, so I move the commission vote to adopt as final the extension of the 2020 elk shoulder season in HD 580 using the regulations in place on January 15, 2021, as presented by the department. All other aspects of the 2020 elk season would remain unchanged. It has I been second. moved by Commissioner Walsh. Uh, 
May I have a second? I believe uh, Commissioner Siebel said, uh, seconded that. I, I second that motion, Mr. Chairman. Great. Um, I really apologize for my technical difficulties. I now have myself um, on a spot phone trying to connect to my computer, but I'm still managing to hang in there. I can at least see your faces. Um, I do want to move on to public comment. Before I do that, I, I would like to make a comment myself. Um, I think one of the things that, that clearly uh, the public wants to see, and, and certainly the department has been mandated through our new governor, is that uh, the customer service orientation, as well as improving overall relationships with landowners. Um, I've received several calls from landowners that are in this affected area. And their indication is, you know, if we, if we want to work together, then you need to help us out when we ask for your help. And in this particular instance, because of the weather, very, very specifically because of the weather. And I know this because I went down to try to fill my own uh, 595 tag in the early January. And I thought I was in the Sahara Desert. I couldn't believe how dry it was. And there, there wasn't elk really to be found on private land yet because they still hadn't moved in. Uh, so I think the flexibility has to happen because um, in many regards, flexibility is based on all the variables that occur. And, and who knows two years ago what we thought the weather was going to be in January of 2021. Um, so I believe flexibility and the ability for the uh, commission to work in that fashion is, is useful. Um, and so I would encourage uh, a, a due pass on this. I think it's the right thing to do. Um, any other comments by the commission before we open up for public comment? Um, I believe that all of you received a letter um, that was addressed to us by a, a previous commissioner out of Helena. Did everybody see that letter? Were you able to review that? Um, so then I guess I, what I would do is I would go to, to uh, uh, Ms. Gangstad and ask if there's anybody that is queued up on the phone. And while she's doing that, again, I want to remind the folks that are coming in on the phone. Um, this is now the time for public comment. Please raise your hand by dialing star nine to indicate that you uh, would like to submit a public comment. Please be cognizant that there are other people who may also want to comment. If you agree with something already said, you can just indicate your agreement instead of repeating it. Um, Katie will take care of your name and let you know when you do come on, please state your name, city, and organization you, resent, uh, you, rep you represent, if applicable. Katie, who do we got? Yeah, thanks, Chair Tabor, members of the commission. We do have a few people dialed in that looks like they want to give comment. <clears throat> Hello, please state your name and uh, welcome. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Tabor, Chairman Tabor, and members of the commission. Uh, this is Nick Jivak, and I'm here with representing the Montana Wildlife Federation. Um, I think it's important for this commission to understand that the shoulder seasons are performance-based shoulder seasons for a reason, and, and they're, they're that way because they're meant to have a higher harvest during the general season and redistribute elk and get them to public land where the public hunters can access them. Uh, certainly don't agree that this year was mild in the general season. In fact, the first three weeks of the general season were cold. Um, I have to point out, this would be the first time that I've seen the commission would approve a season because of a weather event. Uh, in fact, they've gone the other way when things got harsh and, and shut down harvest when animals were struggling. Um, it's important to note that some of the landowners who are requesting this are restricting access to public land. And in fact, they have outfitting operations on that public land and that's impeding harvest in the fall when we need it, when the most hunters are in the field. Um, this, if you go forward is after this heavy snowstorm is going to lead to a big slaughter of elk just three months before they give birth. And it's going to give hunters a black eye um, and, and we should be considering that. And finally, I think this is also going to raise some questions about what we're doing with elk management, moving into a model in which we have three months for people with money and one day slaughters like this for public hunters. So for those reasons, we'd be opposed to this extension. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Givak. Um, Katie, uh, who's next? Yeah, hi, um, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Thomas Baumeister. I represent the Montana chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, address you here today. Um, I feel like you've been put in a in a compromised position here. I listened to your uh, to the commission meeting uh, last Thursday, and quite frankly, I was really impressed by the way you went about conducting your first meeting, that new configuration. And I reported back to to our board um, saying how pleased I was with the decision making, the sort of the quality of decision making. I feel what you're entertaining today, what's before you sort of compromises that integrity, that quality of decision making. And uh, quite frankly, I sort of feel the department has put you in this position. Um, I, I listened to Quentin Kuchula uh, at the beginning talk about customer service um, on at least three occasions. And then I listened to Mr. Voleski talk about this sort of one-off. And I'm sitting here trying to get my hat, uh, head or mind wrapped around this, wondering where this is coming from. You know, is this where, where is this request coming from? Would, would you be asked to be in this meeting this morning, spending over an hour if, if, it, wasn't, if it wasn't for a landowner um, make, making this request? So given what's at stake, given the practical reality of six and a half days of hunting elk and hunters mobilizing, calling the landowners who are tired of having to deal with, with hunters. I wonder if it's worth the cost of implementing this short-term season. Thank you. With that, we oppose the proposal as presented. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Katie, is there additional uh, folks? Katie, yeah, good afternoon, or good afternoon. Can you hear me? This is Dan Vermillion from Livingston. Yes, Dan, please go right ahead. All right. Hey, thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, Dan Vermillion from down in Livingston. Um, served on the commission from about 2007 to 2000, I think, 19. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys for the opportunity to comment today, but also thank you for taking the time to uh, serve on this commission. I hope that you guys find that... Uh, it was an, 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 as an enjoyable and productive experience as I did. Um, during my time on the commission, I would tell you that as this conversation today reflects, Hunting District 580 is one of the more challenging elk hunting districts you're gonna find. And largely that is because it grows elk really effectively and it also has a ton of access pinch points. So you've got a situation where getting elk harvest during the time of year you need it is very difficult. Um, I think all the comments I've heard today on emphasizing the importance of the commission's role in providing flexibility and how the department responds to um, landowner concerns, sportsman concerns. Um, this meeting today really highlights the need and the importance of the commission because this is not something a legislative committee can take up on a dime. Um, as you guys discussed, four types of harvest opportunities we have in Montana, and traditionally we use game, game you know, when, when I was on the commission, we did general seasons on more than one occasion, but we never extended, we're never asked to extend it in a general season that had been closed for almost three weeks. Um, by definition, I think what you're doing is reopening the season, not extending it. And I think in that case, that's where those management hunts and those game damage regulations, such as 12.9-1105 <laughs> for hunting extensions and the game damage regulations come into effect. And I would look at the extensions since that's what you're using. And look at part C under number one. It says public hunting access during the five week general hunting season was at levels necessary to accomplish harvest management objectives. My guess is that is not the case. Um, we all, if you look at average weather in November in Melville, you're gonna find that it would be the average temperature that time of year is something in the, you know, to the range of like 
35 degrees, 45 high, 28 low. You look at the temperatures in November, there were plenty of days that were below 45 and 28. So, and certainly a huge snowstorm on 11, 8 and 11, 9. So I would really encourage you to look at the management hunt and the game damage regulations that you have on file and that, you know, traditionally this permission enacts. Um, <clears throat> you will find, I think, on the commission that there is a perception sometimes in the public that the, the, the department is not flexible enough and that we listen too much to certain landowners and not enough to the sportsmen. And as a commissioner, and I would think you guys feel the same way, and I have confidence you feel the same way, is being a commissioner is about balance. And extending a season in this case where it's been closed for three weeks and the conditions on a, under the hunting season extension regulation, at least in my eyes, are not met. I would really encourage you to use the tools that you have at your, in the toolbox, which are game damage and management hunts. Um, you know, extensions require more than one district if you look at the language typically. And that's, you know, clearly that's not the case here. So I would urge, I'm sorry you guys have been put in this position. You're going to find this district is super tricky. Um, but I really do think that extending a the season, you know, the shoulder season would be the wrong decision here because it's, I don't think it reflects the regulations or the statute. And I would urge you to go to game damage and management hunts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vermillion. Katie, do we have someone else? Chair Tabor, members of the commission, it looks like that's it. I would just put a reminder out to those that are delved in that it's star nine to raise your hand, but it looks like that's it for right now. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Byworth, I see your hand is raised. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to call your attention to an email that came to me directly about 15 minutes into our meeting from a, uh, a resident of that area and a former uh, game warden who expressed uh, opposition to the permit. Uh, I forwarded that on to Sean and I think to each of you, but I doubt you've had a chance to check your email while we're in a meeting, but I just wanted to call your attention that we have received another comment. Thank you. Thank you. I, I believe that uh, because of the timing of this meeting, because I have had uh, uh, several phone calls directly as well as emails, and um, I suspect in the future when we have this type of thing, we, we're going to want to channel these all these remarks and comments that come to us individually so that the commissioners all see that because it's very difficult to manage, you know, these comments and take it into context. Um, let's see, I, I saw uh, Mr. Kujula, you had your hand raised uh, and then you unraised it. <laughs> Did you want to comment? Chair, just quickly, I, I took it down, just wondering if you wanted to move quicker. I just wanted to offer a clarification because it is confusion. I spoke earlier, but let me try again. This is not a formal season extension as you heard public comment speak to that tool. Uh, this is not that process. We're using the word extension, I know, in, in that case and in this case, but this is not a season extension by that definition. And the reason it's not, the reason we're doing this is because that season, that formal season extension tool, we couldn't see that it fit what we understood the request to be. We interpreted it open private lands in 580. Uh, and again, for some of those criteria that were mentioned, we didn't see that tool fitting. And, and in response, we're here this way, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kujla. I believe we've had a vibrant debate and uh, I see that uh, Commissioner Walsh was able to rejoin us. So we still have a, a full commission. Um, I guess I'd like to call for the question unless there's any objection. All right, then let's take a vote. All those in favor of uh, the motion as um, moved by um, Commissioner Walsh and seconded by Commissioner Seaball say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Uh, Commissioner McKean, I don't know that I received your vote. Oh, I was voting against the proposal. So uh, a nay or an aye in the negative. Okay. Uh, let the record show that uh, Commissioner Tabor, Commissioner Seabold, Commissioner Walsh voted aye. Uh, Commissioner Byarth, Commissioner McKean voted nay. Uh, motion carries. 
I believe that is all the business we have scheduled for today. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn unless there's any comments anybody uh, wants to make. I move to adjourn. Do the I have a motion? I move to. It's been motioned by. Uh, been motioned by Commissioner Siebel. Do I have a second? I second. Uh, seconded by Commissioner McKean. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Sorry for my difficulties on my end, but we muddled our way through it. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Commissioners.